Hey guys, so this is going to be um, like a weekly update. Um, I, I, I kind of found myself in a situation where I don't know what video to do next. I've got so many reviews, I've kind of got them written down here, that I'd really love to do. I just finished the James Monroe um, biography, and I've got three pages written for that one already. Working on Jurassic Park, working on so many, you know, the self-published science fiction competition. So let me read you this list of reviews that I'm going to start working on. And I'm just going to go down in order and I and really want to knock some of these out, but not in like the sense of like, you know, not, not, not really in the sense of just doing them to do them, but I, I, I want to do them because I, I want them to be good for you guys. Um, so I've got, um, Dreamer's Pool, the Southern Girl Women's Book Club Guide to Slaying Vampires. Um, I did, uh, Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, uh, James Madison, James Monroe, all of those. Um, did I do the Light Fantastic? I don't know if I did the Light Fantastic. The whole Red Rising, uh, the first trilogy, uh, book one, two, and three, which kind of, uh, Darrow's story, from what I understand. Um... The Color of Law and The Color of Comp Compromise. Um, both of those really need to be done. Those, those are super, super important. Um, I did one on um, like how racism structured uh, like inner cities um, and how um, slums were created, uh, housing projects, stuff like that. And then the other one about The Color of Compromise, which is about um, racism in the Christian church from the inception of America all the way until, um, today. Um, I got it, man. I, I I've got to do all of the Stormlight archive books. I finished rhythm of war, never reviewed it. Uh, the poppy war, which I didn't love, but, um, I'd love to give my opinion on it. Uh, crime and punishment and the brothers Karamazov. I didn't review either of those berserk one and berserk two, which I'm almost done with. Um, the magic of recluse I did, um, Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and, um, Assassin, Assassin's Quest, I did as a group. Um, so if you want individual reviews of that, I'd love to do it as well. Um, Malice, uh, John Gwynn, uh, really, what I really want to do with that one is I want to do a, um, get to know the characters in the first 10 chapters and kind of give you an overview because I was a little confused. I went ahead and restarted the book just to kind of get to know who everybody was. Um, and I'm not the only person that I've heard that uh, felt, felt that way. Um, 12 Kings of Shankiri. Um, try to think what else did I, I think I wrote a whole nother one. Um, uh, tons of books that I'd love to review. Um, I, I don't want to go through all of them, but um I, I have just struggled, um, and then I've got my first um, self-published science fiction book done, uh, The Vacuum of Space, by Julia Hooney. Uh, fantastic book. So, let me tell you what I'm working on right now. Um, loving Old Man's War. I started this, um, I am currently 245 pages in, and um, I'm finding myself just super, super enjoying it. Um... I don't want to spoil it for you because all I knew is that he was an old man that goes to war in space. And um, I, I think getting to know more about it as, as you go is prob probably a good way to do it. Um, currently, we're about to get ready for a big battle, I, I believe. And um, man, it's so good. It's so, so good. Uh, also, Jurassic Park. Um, this is amazing. Um, both of these books, um, not super huge. You know, me and my mass market paper, paperbacks, but um, these are marvelous. I, I Both of these are just keeping my attention gripped. Um, struggling with the Dark Tower, if you can see it. Um, not that the book is bad, I just, uh, for some reason, I'm not wanting to read it. I, I actually opened up the audiobook today, and um, I just didn't feel like reading it. Like, I, I listened to about 10 minutes, and I was like, eh, I don't really feel like reading this one right now. Um, Arm of the Sphinx, kind of feeling the same way. I don't, I don't know. I need to just pick it back up. I was enjoying it while I was reading it, but I started, I got into Jurassic Park and a couple other books and uh, really enjoyed it. So because I wasn't feeling it, I went ahead and was just looking through my library app and um, they had Sleeping Giants 
Is that I think that's what it is. Sleeping Giants by I'll put the book cover up because I I can't remember exactly what it is, but man, it's good. Like basically, it starts this girl. She's like eleven, and she falls into this hand, like this giant metal hand in the ground. Um, she's like walking out to this area, and she falls into this hand. Um, and it's kind of like a um, people are interviewing her, and then I've gotten into the second part where a um, soldier, a uh, helicopter pilot, is being interviewed as well. Um, man, what an interesting concept. I it, Like, it's gripping me. My son, well, I was listening, to my, we were on the way back from the gym, and my son was like, you can't listen to any more of this without me. I am really liking this. I want to listen to it too. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty cool. Um, we recorded his tag. He, he did one on uh, the Trapped in the Video Game series, and uh, I thought that was really cool. So we're, we're I'm going to edit that, get that out soon. Um, yeah, I, I just, I have noticed for some reason I'm having a hard time sitting down and filming and I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to do like a review bomb and I'm going to do as many reviews as I can do. Um, you know, like I said, not, not because I want to just hit you with reviews, but I, I really want to just, um, I read so many books and haven't shared them with you guys. I, you know, you, you might hear about them on my monthly wrap up or whatever, but I haven't really share, shared my deep thoughts. Like I have deep thoughts, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I just think it'd be fun, you know, to, to hop in and do that. So just want to do a quick review. I've, I put a hold in on Harry Potter six. I'm kind of doing like a, a silent read along with that one. I'm not really talking about it, but when they come through on the holds on a uh, audiobook from the library, I listen to them. I mean, I've read the books multiple times, um, watch the movies. Uh, we had to quarantine, uh, a few weeks ago and, um, I never got COVID just quarantining because, you know, protocol or whatever. Um, and me and the kids watched all of the Harry Potter movies while my wife was upstairs being sick. Man, I, <laughs> I, I should do a whole video on it. Just the things that I wish she had chose to do differently. Um, and I think YouTube has just given me every Harry Potter lore video possible. Um, and, and that's kind of shaped my thoughts on Harry Potter lately as well. Um, just thinking about all the different, uh, theories and, and things about it, um, relationships that I would have chose differently as, you know, this, and this is a fan talking. I mean, it still takes some talent to write seven books and make thousands upon maybe millions of people love them. Um, I can't, I don't think I can do that, but, um, <laughs> then I want to go say what I would have done differently. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. Um, presidential live stream coming up very soon. Um, want to do... So the presidential live stream is going to be Thursday the 20th, or 30th. Thursday the 30th of September. Um, coming up, that will be not this coming Thursday, but the Thursday after at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on Monroe. Um, he was considered the last founding father. Um, he served two terms, ran unopposed, the only president to run unopposed in his second term. Um, basically, he was so bipartisan that he brought the country back together under one party. And then um, as he was leaving office, um, kind of in the last couple of years of his presidency, the um, Democratic Republic Party which was the Jefferson party, basically, um, split along uh, party lines, uh, kind of the Missouri Compromise, where um, Monroe wanted to protect the slaves. Um, he, he it, I want to do a whole video on how the Founding Fathers dealt with slavery, how I think um, that affected America today, and how they deflected because they thought somebody else would take care of a problem. Um, and because they deflected, they didn't solve a problem that they should have solved. Um, Monroe actually has a quote out there that he says um, about slavery. He says, it's, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but he, it's morally wrong, and it's a problem that was given to the colonies, and then we have to figure out how to fix it. Um, he, he totally understood, as a soldier, he totally understood... Um, that slavery was wrong 
and he understood slaves fighting and slave revolts because they're fighting for their freedom. He equated that with not only the American Revolution, he also equated it with um, Exodus in the Bible. Um, at, during one slave revolt, his son died, and he personally equated um, his firstborn son dying during the slave revolt, um, and like it, it bothered him. He, like thinking about Monroe, he actually helped found the country of Liberia, which was you know supposed to be the place where slaves were liberated. Um, it was named Liberia for that reason. And then the capital of Liberia is actually Monrovia because he did so much work to set up a uh, slave colony where when the slaves are freed, they would be sent back to um, Liberia and then uh, be set up there. And then the um, government would pay the slaveholders for their slaves and maybe basically purchase their freedom that he was going to have the government purchase their freedom and send them home. Um, but many, many reasons that never happened. Um, and actually at the end of his presidency and the next, not, not the next presidency, but the presidency after slavery got 10 times worse. Um, so I, I definitely want to do a whole video on it. it it'll be probably a long winded video and I'm going to take a bunch of notes and I'll have all my thoughts put together on it, but it really interests me how much the founding fathers despise slavery own slaves, some of them, not all of them, and and they just didn't solve the problem. They they hated it. Some of them hated it. Thomas Jefferson, not so much. Um, but Madison, Monroe, Washington, all of them owned slaves. Virginia slave owners hated slavery, thought it was morally wrong, but for economic reasons, for political reasons, for many other reasons, they let it continue and kind of just hoped it would go away. I, I'm, I'm giving you my whole video on, on slavery. That's something that, that I'm becoming passionate about. The, the like kind of revisionist history kind of idea where I look back on through these biographies, how slavery could have ended and how equality for all could have happened in the 1700s. If, if we'd have just had the courage to tell South Carolina and Georgia Okay, fine. If you don't want to be part of our country, you don't have to be. But we believe slavery is wrong. Really, South Carolina and Georgia not losing their population and their soldiers and their votes kept slavery around and kept slavery around. And then we were adding these slave states with Alabama and Mississippi and Tennessee and uh, Texas and Missouri and Arkansas and Florida even, where I, where I grew up. Um, I... I'll, I'll go into that. I promise. I'll, I'll do notes. I'll, I'll have my facts together. Because, um, man, it, it just really is super interesting to me. Um, I, I think some of it is even my hope that these men were better than they were. Um, because they helped found what I think is the greatest country in the world. Um, and so to think of the Founding Fathers as these seriously flawed men who had powerful and wonderful wives behind them that supported them and stood behind them, not Thomas Jefferson. Um, and and just, I, I'm really enjoying it. So tune in for the live stream, and I will film a whole video about the Founding Fathers and slavery and how slavery um, shaped the beginning of our country. Um, might do another five, the first five Founding Fathers videos, um, kind of talking about doctrine, uh, talking about... Um, I'm thinking about the Monroe Doctrine right now, but also about the Constitution and the way James Madison helped craft that, um, the foreign policy that George Washington kind of set in place and how we built off of that. Um, really the building blocks of what our government became and then um, how the government went, how our country went from a small colony, you know, 13 colonies on one side of the planet to stretching from sea to sea, um, sea to shining sea, right? So that, that's what I've been up to. That's what I've been working on. A uh, lot of thoughts, a lot, lot of thoughts, watching YouTube videos on these presidents, watching YouTube videos on Harry Potter theories, um, and not filming my own YouTube videos. <laughs> so that's my update. Uh, not a lot that I'm reading. A, a few books. Um, a couple of the self-published science fiction books that I'm reading that I definitely, if um, it was free when I went and got it from Kindle, Broken Ascension by... Um, 
Walsh, right? Uh, let me click on the picture. It is Dave Walsh, Broken Ascension, uh, Tysterio Book One. I'm really liking this one. If you're looking for um, a space opera from a self-published author, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Um, that's one that I'm really enjoying right now. Also doing Percival Gint and The Conspiracy of Days. I'm working on that one as well. It's not bad. Um, not as good as Broken Ascension, though. All right. Well, I'll sign off here. Um, I'll go right into filming some uh, review videos, and, and I'll blast you a bunch of reviews out here in the next little while. Talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I really, really do. See ya. Thank you.